Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Matt and I'm a junior doctor working in London in the UK. So I've been working on the ITU department for a couple of months now and that's the intensive care unit and I wanted to make a video to show you guys what my typical day would be like, especially during the COVID period when quite a lot of things have changed. So the intensive care unit, as its name suggests, provides the highest level of care for patients in the hospital. And usually that means that they have one or more failing organs. Conditions that we see can vary quite a lot. And especially during this pandemic time, we've seen quite a few things coming in, more notably the coronavirus patients who require extra ventilation or respiratory support. I've definitely learned so much working in ICU and it's been a really rewarding experience for me as a junior doctor. Just one note about the video though, I've had to anonymize some patients' details due to confidentiality, so I can't actually put the real patients' details in just because it can be tracked by the location and the time frame. However, I did still want to provide you guys with the experience of what my day was like, so I found patients that I've encountered in the past that will give you an idea of the patients that we see in the intensive care unit. So I hope you guys enjoy this perspective perspective of my day in the life of being an ITU doctor. Morning guys, just woke up, ready for another day of work in ITU, made my coffee, just gonna enjoy this for a bit, do a bit of work, have a look at some news, and then get ready for work. I normally wake up around 7am in the morning, get ready, brush my teeth and then make myself a cup of coffee and I like to just sit down for 10-20 minutes in the morning just to go through everything that I need to, things that I want to get done for the day as well as any readings that I've left from the night before. I don't normally eat breakfast and that's just out of a habit that I've built in the last couple of years where I've been doing intermittent fasting. The great thing about living right next to the hospital is that I can get to work so quickly and I usually leave the house about 20 minutes before my shift uh, to get there in ample time to get changed and get ready. I arrive at the hospital, grab a mask and then head upstairs where I go to the changing room and grab a set of scrubs, get changed into those and with a couple minutes to spare, head over to the department where I await the ward round at 8am. The morning ward round usually consists of a handover from the night team telling us about any of the patients that have changed in terms of condition overnight. This usually involves the nurse in charge, the consultant and the handover team from the night and during the day. After the handover, we then go and see each individual patient and assess their clinical statuses. ITU patient reviews need to be the most thorough because they are essentially the sickest patients in the hospital and they need support for basically all their organs. So it's quite important to assess uh, a full status of the patient, which which includes their gastrointestinal system, how they're breathing and their oxygen requirements, their medications, any scans that we still need to order for them, their blood tests and how we can get them better. We review Mr. Y who is a 67 year old gentleman who's come in with some seizures and reduced consciousness and we are still waiting for a scan of his brain so we have a look at his blood tests, we do a full examination for him on the bedside and we just have a look at his observations and see how he's doing. Usually the consultant will be the one who makes the final decision on what the plan is. Today he wants to order a magnetic resonance imaging scan for his head to see if he's got any lesions. We generally spend around 10-15 minutes on each patient just to make sure that we don't miss anything and then we move on to the next one and we see them all individually one at a time. There are five patients in the bay that we're currently seeing. However, because of the coronavirus pandemic, this isn't the only bay that we've got. Since things have begun, we have actually split our intensive care unit into three different sections. The green, the orange and the red and essentially the reason that we've done this is because we need to separate the coronavirus patients from the non-coronavirus patients and also have a zone in which we are waiting for results to come back or we are still unsure about the diagnosis of it. Today there are no patients in the orange zone so we make our way down to the red zone which is just downstairs and is a separate unit in itself. Before entering we have to gown up in full PPE which includes two set of gloves, a full gown, an N95 mask or FFP3 mask as well as a visor to protect our face. And the unit is actually quite an interesting design in the sense that you can only enter from one direction and exit from the other side and you can't go vice versa or back around the other way. And that's just really to protect staff and minimize exposure. When it got really busy during the peak times of coronavirus, we had 10, 15 patients in the red zone of ITU. However, today, I think just because it's a bit towards the end of the pandemic, we only have three patients in the unit. So we fully gown up and we go see them individually. We review Miss A, who is a 78 year old lady with a background of diabetes and ischemic heart disease, which essentially is a lack of perfusion to the heart, who presented to the accident and emergency department with some shortness of breath and a cough was subsequently tested for COVID and was positive and she got sick quite quickly and we had to end up 
putting a tube down her throat to help her breathe. It's always been quite difficult with these patients because you try and do what you can. And with how new COVID is, there haven't been that many studies in what is the best management or the best medications to give. So the consultants have to talk through it case by case and decide what is best for the patient. I examined her chest and lungs and then went to give her daughter an update on what was happening in the hospital. After seeing our last patient on the red zone, we degown in formal manner, which means taking things off one by one and cleaning our hands every step of the way to minimize the contact onto our skin. And then we have a few hours to just crack on with some jobs, which is things like ordering scans, ordering bloods, making sure that discussions or consultations with certain departments happen before meeting again for the ward round at 12 o'clock. This ward round in the afternoon is essentially a microbiology ward round where we meet the microbiology consultant. This goes on for about 20 minutes after which is finally lunchtime. And usually there are two options that I would go for lunch. First one being the canteen and the second one being Marks and Spencer's downstairs. And today I opt for the latter. So I walk down to MS and pick up some food and then eventually head towards the doctor's mess, which is the common room. I like to go to the doctor's common room just because it's quite nice to take a breather and see my fellow friends and colleagues and just catch up and relax. And there is also a really nice pool table, a TV, uh, and we can turn it into a table tennis table, so I have a cheeky game or two of that as well. Unfortunately though, my bleep goes off and a peri-arrest has been called. A peri-arrest is essentially a sick call for a patient in the hospital where the staff taking care of them is asking for a bit of help and the medical team and the intensive care doctors will normally turn up to make sure that the patient is okay. This one happens to be in the accident and emergency department resuscitation unit. So we walk down there and we meet Mr. X who is a 79 year old gentleman with a background history of asthma who has come in with a likely exacerbation of this. He looks really tired and he looks quite sick. So we've given him a couple of medications and nebulizers and steroids just to see if he's faring any better. Top him up on some oxygen. And luckily after some infusions, he starts breathing a little better and his blood tests improve. These sorts of arrests can happen once or even twice or three times in a day and they can be often be very sick patients. But for junior doctors like me, they're really good learning experiences because I can see how to treat a patient acutely. So finally, after a long arrest call, I am exhausted and tired. So I head over to the canteen, get myself a cup of coffee and sit down with my iPad to chill out for a little bit. I've had a bit of a gap today before the next ward round. So I pull out some flashcards and some revision and I have a look at my notes. At around 5.30, we head back for the next ward round, this time just going around with the consultant and making sure the plans or any scans that we've been chasing have happened and interpreting the results and seeing what needs to happen next or just making sure the patients are stable overnight. Finally, it's been a long, long day, but at 8 p.m. I get changed out of scrubs and I walk back home, heat up some food and sit down with my flatmates and just relax for a bit before heading back into bed after a shower. Days like these can feel really long. They are 12 hour shifts, but I definitely learn a lot from them. The intensive care unit is such an incredible place where you see medicine happening like no other. Unfortunately, during this time that I've made this video, I've already moved to my next job, which is down in London. However, I've definitely learned so much from my time in ITU and just had a lot of fun and met some incredible people. With that being the end of my day, that is the end of this video. And I guess I wanted to make this video just to show what my typical day was like as a junior doctor working in the intensive care unit and also just for you guys to get to know me a little better as well and my routine. But I also think that there are so many different perceptions of what it is like to work in the hospital. For me, I take it quite for granted that the people around me understand what's going on in the hospital simply for the fact that most people that I am friends with and work with at the moment work in the hospital or within the medical system itself. There's quite definitely quite a range of perceptions on what exactly goes on in the hospital. So I hope that this just gives some clarity on the job itself. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video and want to follow my journey, please subscribe down below. But in the meantime, stay safe, wear masks, take care of each other, and I will see you guys in the next video.